Nix is a functional programming language, which means that functions are at the core of anything you try to do with it. And so in this video, we will take a look at all things functions, learn what they are, how they look and where they live, so without further ado, let's get straight to it. Starting with the anatomy of a function, because I know that to those of you who don't have much experience with functional programming, this is the most confusing part. In most traditional programming languages, the functions are usually defined with a certain name and consist of a list of parameters, a body and sometimes a return type. It's a very simple concept that allows us to reuse logic and I'm sure that if you are watching this video you are already familiar with it. But in contrast to these functions, most of these languages also implement something called lambda functions, sometimes called anonymous functions or arrow functions, which is a kind of function that is not forever bound to any specific name, can be stored in a variable or passed as an argument, and typically has a more concise syntax. And when we are talking about functions in Nix, we are specifically talking about these kinds of functions. Because in Nix, every function is a lambda. Just look at the syntax of creating one. All it consists of is one single parameter, no more no less, and I will explain why in a moment, a colon, and some expression in the function body. Meaning in this example, we have a simple function that increments a number by 2. To apply it, we can simply pass it any number, and it will evaluate to whatever the resulting expression becomes. Notice that we are wrapping the function with parentheses here, because without them, Nix will think that the argument we are passing to it is also a part of the function body. Try it out yourself in the Nix REPL, this way you can experiment with the language without polluting your Nix projects. Alright, now to elaborate on the single parameter part, yes, in Nix every function only has one parameter. Take a look at this function. It may look as if there are two of them, x and y, but what Nix sees here is instead a function with an x parameter, which returns another function with a y parameter. Meaning even though we can pass it two values and get the result we expect, we can also give it just one and get something called a partially applied function. For a better example, let's assign this function to a variable called multiply, and now we can either fully apply it passing it two arguments, or create another variable called multiply by two assigned to a partially applied multiply function, allowing us to kind of reuse parts of our logic and giving way to some very powerful techniques like piping. This is true for every Nix function there is, so if you ever see function invocations seemingly missing some of the arguments, this is why. But nesting functions like this is not the only way to achieve multi-parameter functions, because another one, and one that you have definitely seen before, is using attribute sets as parameters. In this example, the function expects an attribute set containing x and y attributes as an argument, and then in the function body their values are multiplied. This works, but the problem is that not only do we now have to constantly reference the set throughout the function body, harming readability, but also the lack of any explicitly listed attributes in the parameter forces any user of this function to go and read the entire thing to even know how to use it. So instead, Nix allows us to destructure the parameter right in the definition, which is perfect because not only does it make the entire function much more readable, but also, now everyone who sees this function for the first time in their life can understand how to use it. And if this syntax looks familiar, that is because most of your NixOS modules, packages and shells are actually just functions with such destructured sets as parameters. Meaning if you want it, you could choose not to destructure them and have normal named parameters instead. And while we are on this topic, this also explains why putting some magic words at the top of your configuration.nix gives you access to packages, functions or even other parts of your configuration. Your configuration.nix is just a function, and Nixos applies this function during rebuild, passing it a set with a bunch of attributes. But since for most use cases you do not need all of them, we use an ellipsis or the triple dot syntax to kind of tell Nix that we don't mind any extra attributes. And without it, you would get an unexpected argument error. And now to finally wrap up with destructuring, it also allows us to easily set default attribute values using a question mark, like in this example, where I can even pass an empty set to a function and the missing attributes will be filled in. This can be particularly useful for creating packages with optional features, making them clearly exposed to the user, but also not forcing them to choose. So there you have it, destructured set parameters, normal named set parameters, but what if you wanted to use both, at the same time? This is where the humble add syntax comes in, allowing you to do precisely that. I often see beginners struggling with this one, because it does not really have an alternative in most traditional programming languages, but the idea is very simple. 
Just separate a normal named parameter and its destructured form with an add symbol in any order, and you will get access to both. And to give you an example, one of the common use cases for it is in the outputs function of a flake, where you often destructure the argument for quick access to Nix packages, but sometimes still want to pass the entire thing to your NixOS configuration with special args. So while you could still go without the add syntax, it's basically just another shorthand to avoid repetition and make your code more readable. And now that you know how to define Nix functions, let's finally talk about the functions that are already defined for you, starting with the standard built-in functions. These, as the name suggests, are baked right into the language itself and are implemented in C++ rather than Nix. They include simple functions like trace, toString, or map, and various functions that work with files, all of which stand at the core of everything you can achieve with Nix. The most common ones like toString or map are available in your context right away, but generally you can reference all of them using the built-ins constant. But while the built-in functions provide the essential core, most functions you will use on a daily basis are the higher level abstractions that come from Nix packages. Because like most of you already know, Nix packages is not just a package repo, but also a huge collection of general purpose Nix code, meaning here you will find various specialized functions like stdn make derivation, which is the most common function for building packages, make shell, which is used to create shells, or libmake option, which is used to declare NixOS options. Most of these serve a specific purpose that does not necessarily directly belong to the language core, and in fact, there are so many of them, covering them all in a single video would be impossible. So instead, I'll show you what is in my opinion the best way to discover new functions both from Nix packages and built-ins, a Nix community project called Noogle. Very much inspired by the Google search engine, it lets you search for all kinds of functions by names, descriptions, or even the input and output types, and instead of websites, it will lead you to pages describing various Nix functions, containing some sweet examples, descriptions, and links, so basically it's like the search.nixword.org, but for functions instead of packages and options. I hope this video helped you understand the Nix functions a little better, but of course, there's always more to it, so let me know in the comment section which part of the language confuses you the most, and maybe I'll make a video about it too. And now, I'd like to thank all the amazing people that support the channel and keep it going, especially all our great monthly supporters, of which we have two new members and one returning member, so thanks Stormfox2, The Calamus, and Nemo for signing up, your support is invaluable. And as always, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.